grateful to God to be back with you once again, excited about this week in which Pastor Grave allowed me to come in and share the word of God with you. And I'm sharing this week one of my favorite books in the Bible, um, the book of Romans. And I'm excited about uh, the scriptures that we're going to go through um, as we go through this week. And today I'm going to tackle Romans 3 verses 1 through 8. And so let me read those for you. And I'm reading out of the New International Version. It says, what advantage then is there in being a Jew or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, the Jews have been entrusted with the very words of God. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true and every human being a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness, more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using the human argument, certainly not. If, there was, if that was so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehoods enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as some slanderously claim, that we say, let us do evil that good may result. Their, their condemnation is just. The word of God for the people of God and thanks be unto God. So Paul continues this conversation that he's having. And I'm quite sure Pastor Gray covered chapter 2 in thoroughness. And Paul writes this letter to the church in Rome because there are frictions going on between those who are Jewish converts as well as those who are Gentiles. And so Paul writes this letter to kind of straighten things out. And so he begins this third chapter with three major questions um, to build off of the conversation in which he had in chapter two. And the first question he has is, what advantage of being a Jew or the value of circumcision? And here he is, he's building off the conversation that he was having with them at the end of chapter two regarding circumcision and keeping the law. So he begins by asking the question, what advantage of being a Jew in the value of circumcision? And I love Paul's style as he, he moves from just giving them knowledge to now let me ask questions so that I can stimulate your mind. I don't want to an answer from you, but I want to give you a question and then I'm going to answer it. And so he says that they have been, the answer to his question is they've been entrusted with being the conduits of God's word. And if you look at the Old Testament scriptures, those who were accredited writing the Old Testament scriptures, all of them was of Jewish descent. And so Paul says that they have the value or they have the, the, the uh, they've been entrusted with being the conduits or the conveyors of God's word. So that's the advantage in which they have. And then he comes down to the second question that he asks and he says, what if some, what if some were unfaithful? Where their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? And the response to this question should make all of us shout because Paul Paul responds, not at all. And I know you have been saved all your life, but I haven't been saved all my life. I haven't been faithful. I haven't been walking this journey with God. But those times in my life when I was unfaithful didn't nullify God's faithfulness towards me. There were times in my life when I, I wasn't going to church or I wasn't doing the things that I should have been doing, but God continued to keep his hands on me. And I know that's not just my testimony, it's your testimony as well. So in those moments and times in our lives when we were unfaithful, God's faithfulness still was shown upon or shined upon each and every one of us. And when we think about God's love and his faithfulness towards us, even when we were unfaithful to him, that should have made all of us just shout every time we think about it. Then he concludes with this third question in these first eight verses that we're looking at. And he says, if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness, isn't it unfair to punish us? Notice, Paul interjects by saying, I'm using a human argument, basically meaning I'm just speaking how y'all are thinking, but this is not how I'm thinking. He says this, 
because Paul had some haters and they were unfairly saying that this was Paul's theology, but it wasn't Paul's theology. And if you follow that kind of thinking, you might as well just say that the more you sin is better. And Paul is saying, no, I've never said that, never thought about it, because we know that's not the case. We know that sin is that thing that keeps us or separates us from God. And so Paul says, that's never been my argument. I, I, don't, I don't want you to live a life of sin, but I don't want you to take God's righteousness for granted by being unrighteous, but I want you to live the life that God has called you to live, and that is to be without sin. So Paul begins this conversation in this third chapter with these three questions. I pray that you go back and study them, take a look at it, take a look at Paul's response to those questions, and I guarantee you, you'll be blessed. We got we got running out of time. I know I've uh, intruded on your lunch long enough, but guess what? There's still more word to come, so tune back in on next week so that we can continue to chew on this book of uh, Romans 3. <laughs>